Hey guys, I'm Tom at TechTap, and I wanna find out which has the best camera between the new Google Pixel 4 XL, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the best phones from Google, Apple, and Samsung. I'll obviously be giving my opinions throughout this as we test the photography, low light, selfies, video, but I want you guys to tell me also which you think is best in the comments below. So both the iPhone and the Note 10 Plus have a triple lens setup with a wide, ultra wide, and telephoto, whereas the Pixel just has the two, missing out on that ultra wide. But let's start with some video, and this is shot with the rear camera at 4K 30. Although the iPhone and the Note can actually shoot at 4K 60, which the Pixel can't. They all do a good job stabilizing the video as I'm walking, but you can definitely see differences in brightness and color vibrancy. Now, if we switch to the telephoto lens, which gives us a two times optical zoom on all the phones, and then to the ultra wide lens, although of course the Pixel doesn't have one, so it's back to the main lens here. Video is nice and stable though, even shooting 4K ultra wide. Now this is a really good test of the dynamic range, and I think the iPhone comes out on top here with a more even exposure throughout. Just look at the difference in the lighting of the hedge between the phones. But walking into town, video from all three look good. And actually I bumped into my little nephew Oliver, and you can see quite a big difference in how the phones handle the skin tones. Can I, can I get a big wave? Say hi Tom. Can I get a wave? Say like and subscribe. Like and subscribe? Like and subscribe? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ollie. <laughs> but what about selfie video? You can see the angle's slightly different because I've got the phones on this trident fork thing, so the angle's a touch different, but you can see the quality, uh, the frame rate, and also the resolution because interestingly, both the iPhone and the Note 10 Plus can shoot selfie video in 4K, which this is being shot. The Pixel 4, still limited to 1080p. But in terms of stability, color accuracy, field of view, sort of how much I can get in the frame, and just picture quality, which do you think looks better? Mm -hmm. One feature that is unique to the Note 10 Plus though is live focus video. You can get it on the rear camera and the front one, although in my experience it does work better with a selfie mode, but you can see it adds a bit of a sort of bokeh effect, a blur behind me to give it, well, the idea is a more professional look, more portrait look, although sometimes the edge detection is um, a little bit off. But let me know what you think and whether that is a feature you think you would actually use, because for now, as I say, it's exclusive to the Samsung. All right, so we're back in the studio and I will do a quick microphone comparison. All three phones were shooting with the rear camera at 4K 30 and I'm jumping between the phone's audio. You'll see the little speaker icon go between them so you know where the audio is coming from and so you can hopefully get an idea of which phone has the best microphone. So now we're using the telephoto lens on all three phones, so we've got a nice close-up of my face. So start with the Google. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. iPhone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That may be the most boring thing I've ever done on this channel, but you know, for science. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to some photos, and all three look fantastic, although there are some subtle differences in color. You can see the grass on the Note 10 looks more saturated, and there's a warmer tone to the Pixel shot. The iPhone's HDR brightens the darker areas, like the fence, which does look good, although sometimes it can make the photo lack contrast and look a little flat. We can then zoom in using the two times telephoto lens, and then back out to the ultra wide. Although again, not on the Pixel, it's a shame it doesn't have one. Typical English weather here, sunny one minute, threatening rain clouds the next. But this is a good example of how the phones handle the dynamic range. And they all do a good job of dealing with the brighter highlights in the clouds. I would say the Note 10 does this best, but then looking at the bushes at the bottom, the blacks are crushed a bit and we lose detail. Again, switching to the telephoto lens, and then to the ultra wide. To my eye, the iPhone shot is more true to life, but the Note 10's is a lot more vivid and eye-catching. Just look at the color of the sky and the grass. Now this is really interesting because there's a big difference between the three. Again, the iPhone's HDR can make photos look quite flat sometimes and lacking in contrast. I think the Note 10 strikes a good balance, although the Pixel 4 is the most natural and true to life, I'd say. All three phones do have their beauty modes turned off though. This is one gorgeous looking dog. Her name is Skye, and I think the biggest difference between the three is the Note's color saturation. Just look at her tongue and her owner's hand. Some people may prefer the vibrancy, but it's not as realistic. If I crop in by two and a half times, it's remarkable how similar they all are in terms of detail. Again, the main difference is the Note's color. Oh, 
One of the Pixel 4's new features is dual exposure. Personally, I think the name is a little misleading, but basically you get sliders for the brightness and the shadows that you can adjust in the camera app. So increasing the shadows a bit can help brighten a darker subject. Here's another example. This is the normal shot, and then again, as I've adjusted the shadow slider a bit. It's definitely brighter, but it can result in more grain and noise though. It really is incredible just how good the cameras in our phones are these days. And this is shot just with the phone's normal photo mode, no specific macro feature or anything. You can see a notable difference in color and contrast between them though. Which one do you think looks best? So this is Nick who came over to say hi as I was filming this video and who's actually a subscriber, which is really cool. But for this picture, the phones handle the tricky backlighting very differently. I'm actually impressed with the Note 10 though, handling the bright clouds, my darker coat. It definitely has a warmer tone, but subjectively it does look good. The Pixels is by far the sharpest. You can definitely see more detail, particularly in our faces. Now I want to talk about zoom for a second. This is shot using the main lens on all three. Ignore the strobing light on the Pixel shot. I think it's default shutter speed doesn't play nice with my Philips Hue lights. Now while all three do have two times optical zooms, the Pixel has something called super res zoom. So if we go up to eight times on all three phones, if you look at the text on the lens, it still looks remarkably sharp and more detailed than the others, particularly the Note 10. Moving on to a portrait shot, and firstly you can see the slightly wider field of view we get on the Pixel's camera. These were all taken from the same distance. They all look good, but I'd say the Pixel is the only one that doesn't completely smooth out my face and make me look a bit plasticky. As I say, all the extra beauty modes were off for this, but in terms of the bokeh blur, you can adjust the intensity of this on all three phones, even after you've taken the picture. Okay, let's try some low light shots, and while it's not totally dark outside just yet, I'm still using their night modes. And I think the iPhone and Pixel trade blows here, but the Note 10 Plus falls behind a little bit. It's over sharpened and doesn't look as natural, and the logo exposure hasn't coped quite as well with the left side of the tree which was blowing in the wind, as well as the others. Okay, so this is without night mode, including turning off the iPhone's automatic one, but just look at the difference when you do use it. They're all significantly brighter and more detailed. I think I'm most impressed by the iPhones actually. Everything, including the floor, is sharp and well lit. Back in the studio, again using night modes, but in slightly brighter conditions, I'm impressed by the Pixel's more natural colors. So here we've got Teddy from Mr. Bean, an old camera and a fake plant. Firstly, without night modes, and then again with them turned on. The Note 10 gets significantly brighter, perhaps a little overexposed. I think the Pixel wins though with overall detail. The Pixel does also have a new astrophotography mode that takes up to 16, 15 second long exposures. You will need a tripod and to wait up to four minutes for each shot, but as you can see, it's significantly higher quality than the other two. So if you weren't already sick of my face, well, you will be soon. Let's compare some selfies. The iPhone and the Note do have a slightly wider field of view, but I think the Pixel and the iPhone do a much better job with the dynamic range between the brighter highlights and the shadows. Overall, I think the Pixel comes out on top though with its more natural colors. Here's another example, and I don't know what's going on with the Note 10 Plus, but it's significantly darker, the skin tones are way off, and compared to the Pixel and iPhone, I think the Note selfie camera is definitely falling behind a bit. Switching to selfie portrait again, and while this is not the most flattering photo, but on the Note, it just looks too contrasty. We lose a lot of detail in my jacket. The iPhone is bright, but looks a little washed out. And the Pixel is very sharp. You can see more texture in my skin, but if you're using this, you may want to put some beauty modes on. In lower light, the Note 10 does redeem itself a bit. It's a little bit smoother, but it's less noisy than the others, and it still looks good. So that was a lot to take in, but overall, which do you think had the best camera? Vote in the poll at the top right, and let me know why in the comments below. Honestly though, you really can't go wrong with any of them, and a lot of the time it's just nitpicking differences. I really hope you found this useful though, and let me know what other camera comparisons you'd like to see. Thank you so much for watching guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more from me, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.